You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for September 17th, 2021. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where Democratic legislative supermajorities and a Democratic governor are getting shit done. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. How are your friends' cousins' testicles doing, though? Uh, I don't have any friends. I don't have any cousins. <laughs> and I don't give a shit about anybody's testicles but my own. So <laughs> I have no opinion on the matter. I, my I friend's cousin. Cousin's friend. Cousin's friend, I think I've it heard was. That, I've heard that Nikki Bernard, um uh gripe on uh the bulwark podcast and i'll only say that uh, several times and it's and the way that uh, mr Sykes stretches out two and a half million followers it's like you know how dare she be more popular than i am <laughs> you know because she's a she does music and then says stupid shit and you're mm-hmm. you know you're not so but it, it's the the effrontery of someone to have that many um, people who want to pay attention to their stuff, which has nothing to do with politics, except when she crosses over into stupid town and says stupid things. Well, yeah. I mean, she's not um, – we're not going to spend any no. more time on this. No, there's no, no, this, is, this is much more time than we should have – we need to get – we need to get to the business of how awesome Illinois is. Yes. Let me read um, David Roberts' uh, Twitter thread quickly. Okay. Uh, because he went into some great detail about one of the, one of the big stories that came out of Illinois now, this week. we should warn people, normally uh, this would be in the local news section, which you would want to scroll past if you live in California or New York, because you don't care right. about Illinois. But, but this we is do. really important. It really is. We are the California of the Midwest, and we I are. have had people reply to me when I say that and mm-hmm. say, you're actually from California, saying, no, you in Illinois are actually doing better than we are at this point. Yes. Which yes, is we are. remarkable. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, David Roberts uh, s- tweeted, and he is at DR Volts, V O L T S. He used to be Dr. Vox. Now he's Dr. Volts. Right. So. And I think mm-hmm. he's writing for an outfit called Volts that I think, I believe he created. But at any uh, rate. I believe he lives about th- about 15 miles away from where Junior Dude is vacationing right now. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, cool guy. Yes. Just took a short break from the depressing hellscape of national politics to talk with some Illinois folk about the amazing energy bill the state just passed. Yay. Competent, forward-looking public policy is possible where and only where voters elect Democratic supermajorities. Mm -hmm. The process in Illinois is what you want from democracy. Utilities, renewable energy developers, unions, EJ and a I don't know what EJ is. EJ advocates and green greens, you know, mm-hmm. the green party type people uh, got in a room together and hashed it out. It was a long and painful and contentious. It took three years. Yep. Everybody got stuff and everybody gave stuff up. But in mm-hmm. the end, everyone got a bill they can live with. And the state got a huge leap forward mm-hmm. for its economy, its health and its most vulnerable. But that whole process was only possible because Democrats ran everything. They allowed small d democracy to happen, interests to be balanced. The Democratic Party is where all real governance happens. It's true. Where interests clash and find compromise, where things move forward. It's got the full left to right spectrum, the crusaders, the corporate sellouts, <laughs> all of politics in miniature. It's all true. It's all true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you see that at the national level. Definitely. Well, and we've said this for a long time, that uh-huh. the Democratic Party has everyone from AOC and Elizabeth Warren to uh, to uh, well, Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin. And yeah. we don't we really would like Joe Manchin to wander off into the woods and never come back. <laughs> but because. It is the only place left in you – know, we're the only game in town. The only right. place where anybody is serious at all about anything to do with liberty or democracy or good policy, fiscal – Or just getting something done, right? Yeah. 
just getting shit done. Having government do something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got the full left to right spectrum, the crusaders, the corporate sellouts, all of politics in miniature. And then over to the side in the U.S. has a reactionary, ethno-nationalist, nihilist Trump party dedicated to bringing everything down. The nihilists are politically empowered far beyond their numbers by structural distortions and advantages. So the actual democracy part of the country is out of luck. I guess what I'm saying is it's fucked up. Mm -hmm. Thank you, David Roberts, for that thread. Well, and we almost interrupted that reading of some great stuff happening in Illinois with a Twitter thread from a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. about all the child care and child care worker stuff that is being signed into law in Illinois this week. And which is if a- you're looking for a job in Illinois, you can get three months of free, free child care, courtesy yeah. of the state of Illinois. It's, it's you know, I mean, Lord knows I wrote about Chicago and Illinois politics um, years ago, back when I lived in Chicago, especially, and uh, back when uh, uh, Rod Blagojevich was governor. Um, it was, it was a fertile topic. It's always been a fertile topic. Political corruption has been, is as old as Illinois politics and always has been. And Mike Royko made an entire career out of cracking skulls about that, but he never moved out of Chicago because for all of its faults, it's an amazing, wonderful place to live and it is improvable. But the way you improve your government is by making sure competent people run it. And, and here's the thing, and you pointed this out yesterday when we were having this conversation. When you have Democratic supermajorities, suddenly the Republicans in the state legislature get interested in doing stuff too. They, they start adding things on. They start asking for stuff. They, they see that there's a train leaving the station and they want things for their districts because they are politicians first and foremost. And they start cooperating with the supermajority and, and asking for little changes around the edges, which are perfectly reasonable. That's how governance works. So come on, move to Illinois. We'll show you around. I'll give you the whole, I'll give you the cook's tour. Are you still there? <laughs> I'm here. The The responses to that tweet. I'm not, I, we can't, we don't, not going to get into it. Okay. I'm just fucking done with some people. Well, yeah, that's, that's the, <laughs> the other part of good governance is ignoring yep. assholes um, yeah. by the board feet. I mean, I, yep. I've, I've, I've narrowed my focus to, you will notice that although we do mention it, we don't actually do the blow by blow, Hal Sparks, look what happened on Fox News today, Owen Owen Ann, because he does a great job of it, but it's pointless. It is a giant propaganda, shithole, nihilistic monstrosity that will always be that. Whichever day of the week you pick, whichever hour of the day you plug in, it's always going to be horrifying. So you should just... Be aware that it exists like a giant meteor headed this way, but not dwell on the the particular atrocity committed today because there'll be another one tomorrow and another one after that because that's who they are. That's just who they are. You're not criticizing Hal, though. I watch no. Hal nearly every day. Hal's amazing. Hal does break this stuff down. <laughs> Hal, he does. Hal is doing what Krusty the Clown only dreamed of, which is... <laughs> Which is being on television twenty four hours a day. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, yeah. He, and he does he does yeoman's work, and he's he's yeah. funny, and he's consistently well researched, and he's a, he's a pleasure to watch, and he's a friend of the podcast. He's been on this podcast several times. Um, but that's his thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't find it fruitful to use our one hour a week or the right, two posts the I do. A week. We have we have one hour a yeah. week. Yeah. I'm talking and, to you. And and or or to use my writing or your writing skills to focus on the specific horrible, horrible thing that Tucker Carlson did today, because tomorrow's mm-hmm. going to be another horrible thing because he never changes because he's an awful person and he has a huge platform. Um, I think, I think it is important. Um, hmm. I, I wonder how to put this about in terms of my work at Crooks and Liars, because I think it is important to point out when there's a glitch in the matrix. Uh, you, well, your work on Crooks and Liars, if you don't mind me being extremely biased towards the woman <laughs> I love, um, and the rest of the crew there, which are invaluable. This week, I was looking for video, and I found it. The only place I found it from 2010 was Crooks and Liars. Yep, because we have the archive, and there's nothing the deleted. Yeah, And you've been yeah. doing this. I mean, Crooks and Liars has been crook, uh, cooking along, doing their thing for 17 years, which is yeah. impressive. Yeah. But it is a news aggregation and opinion site. Right. That has a very wide aperture about what you take in. So, of mm-hmm. course, it's going to be 
a lot more intense about what's going on in Fox and own and and what's going on with Well, and I think what we're looking for, at least what I'm looking for as an editor there is when there's a glitch in the matrix. And I can mm-hmm. think of two this week that are are immediate. One is Tucker Carlson being on some podcast, Dave Rubin's podcast, which Fox News viewers will not hear him, so he knows <laughs> he's safe outside the he actually steps outside the Fox News bubble to sure. be honest, right? Yeah. And then it's very much like Chuck Todd can go outside the meet the press bubble and say, oh, you know, I'd love to say that Republicans are liars. But if I said that, I'd never get another guest on my show. And my point is to get Republican guests on my show. So Mm -hmm. I put up with it. And he can say that to a comedian, (laughs) you know, but, you know, he can say that to um, a radio. Yeah. Or a radio interview. But he would never say that on his show. No, of course not. And here's Tucker Carlson saying, oh, yeah, when I get cornered, I lie. Right. And and everyone just sit, just sort of passes by because it's baked into your understanding and and MSNBC's understanding and NBC mm-hmm. and CNN's understanding of Fox. Oh, there are some great people that work at Fox. Oh, I buy drinks know. with them all the time. Ha, sure. ha, 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 ha. You know, some good people. Not they're a lying sack of shit that is destroying our democracy, which mm-hmm. is what they really are. Well, Fox News is toasted, honey. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a Mad Men reference. It's a Mad Men reference. You know, how do you advertise cigarettes when everyone knows they'll kill you? Well, you don't say it at all. You just say, it's toasted. You just mm-hmm. ignore the fact that this is going to kill you yeah, and, right. and go right past that to... The, the the word that makes you feel good about doing the terrible thing that's going to end your life. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. that's the, and, and, but as with Mad Men, I hate to, I hate to sort of dial into that, but as with Mad Men, when Don Draper goes to the bar with the lady to talk about, you know, getting into her pants and she starts talking about love, he says, love, I think that was invented by guys like me to sell nylons. Mm-hmm. He's absolutely mm-hmm. cynical about what he is doing and why he is doing it. But he's very, very good at it. And Tucker Carlson is 100% cynical about the the rubes and the- Oh, the, yeah. He hates his viewers. The morons no who watch him yep. and, and laughs all the way to the bank, just like pretty much everyone on the in the right-wing media mm-hmm. has done for decades. Mm-hmm. And there are a few who who apparently, you know, drank the Kool Aid and believed this bullshit. And when the train, when the Trump train left the station, they sat there going, "What? What, what happened? What, mm-hmm. what happened? Mm-hmm. Well, you happened, asshole. Mm-hmm. Didn't you notice that this? You know, you're on a bus. To the left of you is a Nazi. To the right of you is a Klansman. And there's a guy with a with a mohawk and a and a kill the liberals guy driving the bus. Didn't you notice any of this shit? Maybe you're on the wrong bus. Mm-hmm. So, you know, pardon me for, for assuming you're Or maybe you're, you're on them. the right bus and you haven't looked yeah. in a mirror in 10 years. Well, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And, and and now you're all cranky that we assumed you were with them. And of course you were with them. You were on the same fucking bus with them for decades. And you got mm-hmm. off and said, no, 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 not me. Well, you reek of them. You look like them. You talk like them. You, you were playing Rush Lib on the radio the entire fucking time. And now you're pretending that you you just were mistaken. That well, and being thing. shocked that on January 7th, you're on the no-fly list. Right. Because I'm a patriot. <laughs> yeah. Guess, guess what, dude? Yeah. Um, well, I want to talk for a minute. We're going to switch gears and talk for a minute sure. about Build Back Better. Yeah, let's do that. I just want to mention a couple things about Build Back Better. One is... Um, there is a group of Nobel economists who put out an open letter today. Uh, noting that Build Back Better is going to have a negative impact on inflation. <gasps> no, yeah. Yeah. no, but see, yeah. but I've been told by reliable people on uh, <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> who, you, know, you have that, to be that, terribly, terribly worried about inflation, right? No, no actually, Sharon investing. Told me. No, yeah. investing no. in workers yeah. and clean clean air and clean water is going to be good for our economy. And uh, the second thing is the cost of this 10-year program, Uh as it stands, is 50% what the Pentagon budget is. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. It's 3.5 trillion over 10 years. Is 50%. Half, we're going to turn around, has been half of what the Defense Department charges us Mm -hmm. uh, to, to invest in clean air and clean water. Elder care, child care, people, and you people. know, 
people yeah. the people that we are spending ten trillion dollars to defend, we're going to spend this to make their lives a little better. And then finally, the the important point that nothing in this program is optional. Mm -hmm. It's not elder care at this stage in our demographic makeup of our country. Elder care is not optional. We well, have to do something. We, we, we're, since global warming is going to make ice flows obsolete, we can't just shove seniors <laughs> we onto an ice no flow. We can't ice flows to put seniors no. on. <laughs> right. We're running out of ice you flows and I for the seniors. We would be first on the ice flow. We would. We, we don't That's have true. that much longer, Drift Glass. That's true. We don't. <laughs> we have about 40 minutes, is my, is my <laughs> guess. But. <laughs> uh, so. Those are your talking points for the weeks, folks. 50% yeah. of the defense budget, nothing in it is optional. And uh, Nobel economists say, no, this is going to be anti-inflationary. All right. You want to talk about um, zombie both siderism. Oh, my gosh. It's back, Drift Glass. I, well, and, and it never left. That's that's the thing. This is <laughs> this is a constant. This is a through line for this podcast, a through line for, for our writing going back 16, 17 years, a through line for the liberal blogosphere going back to the mists of time. Uh, is how absolutely fanatically dedicated to blaming both sides, to blaming Democrats, uh, the, the mainstream media is. And every conservative within the mainstream media is dedicated to that proposition. Um, this week, uh, Kathleen Parker came to my attention. I, I don't write a lot about Kathleen Parker because she's just another inconsequential conservative pundit who has made a 34-year-long career out of drafting along behind conventional Beltway wisdom at the Washington Post. 34 years. One third of a century. She's been cranking out tepid, bland, conservative Beltway wisdom. And has made a is great she the person who said something not nice about Sarah Palin? She is. And that is the no. last time I believe I wrote about her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, it was back in 2008, and that's where I, I actually pulled up archives, and, and this is where Crooks and Liars came in so very handy, because they had video of her um, on what was once called the Chris Matthews Show, um, sitting shoulder to shoulder with a guy named David Brooks, um, bitching about something that I'll get to in just a moment. But in 2008, uh, she suddenly discovered that uh, the Republican Party was full of Republicans. <laughs> Uh, and her whole column was about, uh, and I, I will read directly from this. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. I'm a traitor and an idiot. Also, my mother should have aborted me and left me in a dumpster. But since she didn't, I should F myself. I should off myself. And then she got really, really like spun up over the fact that I've gotten hate mail over the years, you know, but nothing like this. And I believe this collective reaction from the liberal blogosphere was welcome to Liberalville, bitch. Yeah. Because this, you didn't notice that this is how your readers have been all along because they never turned their guns on you. And now they have. This is just a little, little tiny taste of what it's like to be a liberal criticizing you and your fucking party and your movement every right. goddamn day for the last God knows how many decades. Because she wondered aloud in a column about Sarah Palin's qualifications to, Her be, fitness vice to be president. president. Yeah. Well, uh, then. She did what she does, what they all do, which is drift slowly back into the good graces of the right wing media. And she came up. This is this is something um, if you didn't know the year and the date, this is from 2010. See how familiar this sounds. See if this doesn't sound like today. Um, I'm pulling a quote directly from her, I believe, talking between David Brooks and Chris Matthews back in 2010. He should have known from the Clintons that any time you tack left, you go in the hole. You know, he was elected by all these former Republicans independents because they thought he was going to be a centrist leader. And he projected that on the campaign. So, you know, he's got to come back to the center. This was her talking about Barack Obama in 2010. Guess what they're saying about Joe Biden in 2021? Exactly the same fucking thing. He's, he's gone crazy left. He's the liberals only. He's, he's only because, sucking up to his liberal base. Because, you know, because he's going hard left. He's going hard left. Oh, my God. And so um, this is her last Friday. Um, and the reason I noted this was because it was in our local paper because she syndicated all, all over the country. This is a paragraph I pulled and said, oh, no, no, I'll be writing this up. Um, it's fair to say with each president following George H.W. Bush, division became an end in itself, a self-righteous vision that culminated 
in the January 6th siege of the U.S. Capitol. While the fringes terrorize the center with fear attacks and racial division, is it any surprise that we're divided about whether to accept a life-saving vaccine? So this is not a Republican problem. This is every president. This is Bill Clinton. This is George W. Bush. This is Barack Obama. Each escalating the division in the country by their horrifying rhetoric, by their divisive rhetoric. I remember Clinton. Clinton did everything he could to suck up to Republicans. Barack Obama did nothing but beg for Republican cooperation with an open hand for eight goddamn years. But she remembers it as the January 6th siege on the U.S. Capitol was the culmination of both sides, of the fringes on both sides being so horrible that it just drove us to this place. And that is because she lives in the safest, laziest bunker where the worst pundits will always find refuge. And that is the Beltway both siderist safe house. And it's never going to go away. It's never going to go away because there's no force on earth powerful enough to blast these people out of their complacency. She saw what happens when you turn even slightly against the right and they come for you with a sword in each hand back in 2008. And she didn't learn a fucking thing because they never learn because it's wired into them that you have to blame Democrats. You have to find some hippie out there to punch to keep your fucking job at the Washington Post for 34 years. I want to talk about out of fuck Sandy Slavitt. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite Andy Slavitt is out of fuck Sandy Slavitt. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Meadows, you remember Mark Meadows, Drift Glass? I do, vividly. He, Several... was, Joe, he was Donald Trump's chief of staff. He was for a minute. <laughs> and mm -hmm. he's, still, he's still working for Donald Trump because, you know, there's a campaign coming up. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Mm -hmm. We got a fundraise for that. So he's still, uh, you know, at the at the golf club in New Jersey planning exciting things. But he decided that Biden's vaccine mandate for employers with over 100 employees uh, deserves a tweet. Something, something constitution tyranny. Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> and so Andy Slavitt tweeted. Hey, look, it's the let's infect people with COVID and not tell them crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Mark, my advice is to go find a country with a constitution that says what you think ours does and try <laughs> living there. <laughs> Wouldn't be nearly as fun, Mark. <laughs> yeah. But there has been this week, Drift Glass, a big shift, I think. Yeah. And it's, it's an underrated shift in the COVID conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, we are all done with the carrots and the pleases. This start, sort of started last week. Um, we're now telling average Americans that if they or their loved ones can't get into the hospital when they need to, it's because of the unvaccinated overwhelming the system. And hospitals are coming out and saying that in Idaho, they are, you know, triaging and making people wait in, in parking lots for emergency room care. Um, this is a different problem than just uh, get vaxxed so you don't get hospitalized. You know, right. that was the argument two weeks ago. Now it's you, average American who may be vaccinated, who may not be vaccinated, just you as an American and what your expectations are for your health and your ability to get emergency care. You can't get hospitalized for any reason. Mm -hmm. because of all the unvaxxed taking up ICU beds. Well, and this is like, in a weird way, the the medical um, anti-vaxxer conservative version of Gresham's law of bad money driving out good money. This mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. covid idiots driving everyone else out of the hospital because there's right. no room for you because we're taking up all the beds because we wouldn't get vaccinated because Tucker Carlson told us they were going to put a chip up our ass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, there's, and that is preventing... People who might think they are safe from COVID, you're mm -hmm. taking something else away from them. Mm -hmm. The ability to get emergency care if you break your leg, if you have a heart attack, if your kid has a fever that's not COVID related, you should be able, the expectation in this very privileged country is you should be able to drive to the hospital and get emergency care. Mm -hmm. And you can't because of Tucker Carlson. Because of them. Because mm -hmm. of them. And that mm -hmm. I think it should be very clear. You know, this is the time when we, we in, they've done this before. 
we should be hanging a big red letter A around the neck of every Republican mm -hmm. and making them walk through the rest of their lives with that on their chest, saying, mm -hmm. if, you, if the country's fucked up, it's because of me. Mm -hmm. Because of me and my stupid, stupid beliefs and, the, and because I wouldn't change the damn channel. That's mm -hmm. the reason this country mm -hmm. is screwed up. And make them live with it for the rest of their lives. Make, mm -hmm. they, should be, they should live in shame. Their neighbors should shun them. People should look at them when they come in, the, in, in, in to buy groceries as if they were dragging behind a rabid dog. Yep. Well, Drift Class, that, that reminds me of something I tweeted a couple of weeks ago, which has to do with the California recall election. Oh, how'd that go? It, it went really good. Uh -huh. <laughs> the Democrats won by, you know, 30 points. Uh, and I tweeted that I wanted the results to be so lopsided that Fox News wouldn't talk about it at all the next day. Mm -hmm. And it turned out I just had the network wrong because OANN did not talk about it at all the next day. Yeah. They ran old clips of elders talking yet, about the election and pretended like nothing had happened. And yet the, the recall was weirdly very good for Larry Elder's political future. Yeah. That's what I heard. I heard <laughs> trusted Beltway <laughs> pundit and lifelong employee for no explicable reason, Chris Saliza, explained that Tuesday night was literally weirdly a very good night for Larry Elder's uh, political future, which was just the tip of the iceberg for hot takes because they had all these Democrats fail, Democrats are screwed, Democrats this all lined up and they couldn't just throw them away. So they just recycled them. So you had Cassie Casey Hunt uh, over on CNN where she's no better than she ever was on MSNBC uh, saying that I must, I'm sorry, I'm misreading this. No, um, it's, she just had the, it must be great news for John McCain syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, California is a different area than the rest of the country. You know. And this, this recall shouldn't have even happened in an overly democratic state. Yes. Totally not understanding that the democratic recall or the recall law in California is way too easy to recall a governor. Well, and I heard that kind of like, well, but what would have happened if, if Gavin Newsom was like governor of Florida? Well, that's hilarious. What would happen if trouts could fly? Then they <laughs> challenged Falcon for supremacy of the air, but that's not how anything works. So why are you saying this stupid shit? <laughs> right. Well, because writing a headline that says Republicans in disarray will get me fired. Yep. So I that's have to right. I have to invent a fucking reason why this is somehow bad for Democrats or the Democrats should be worried or Democrats should tread lightly or you know we're really a center right country and all the people who say this shit have jobs forever, forever. There's, again, no force on earth capable of dislodging Chris Saliza from the media ecosystem. Well, and, and things... then the other argument is, you know, the liberal media won California for the Democrats. Sure, and we did, <laughs> and we did. Yes, because you know what? The Democratic president went and campaigned in a Democratic state for a Democratic candidate. Oh my God. Yeah. Have you seen Trump rallies recently all over the, all over the, the, uh, asshole backwater red states <laughs> have you noticed any of that and how, how well they're doing there how how mm -hmm. prosperous and happy and disease free they are there uh it, but again i i have tried to make it a rule i don't i i, I it's honored more in the breach than whatever is not to say yes but have you noticed that republicans are doing worse because it doesn't matter mm -hmm. they're a different species as far as i'm concerned they they have trying to shame them or guilt them or, or make them see consequences of their actions is useless. It's pointless. Class, I, I, I have to disagree with you just a little bit mm -hmm. because I saw several conservative Twitter threads after Joe Biden did the mandate for employees over 100 employees, companies over 100 employees, and including I read a twitchy thread uh -huh. from Michelle Malkin's website. Right. And there were several people within that thread saying, this is just a terrible choice either way, uh -huh. meaning getting vaccinated. Yeah. And you could tell they were vaccinated. Of course. Because they want either they wanted to see their grandchildren or they wanted to fly an airplane or they just didn't want to get COVID. And they knew that what they were their politics was saying was bullshit. And, well, it, when it, and like abortion, when it comes down to them, that's, they should, get their own rules. <laughs> let, let me let me amend what I was saying. It will not change their public behavior. Or right. Voting the records public face or the, they put on might all. not change. However, I think 
you are seeing changes as they continue to lose that you will see more changes like we saw in the Tea Party, where you form a whole new movement of, well, I never believed in, you know, I never liked the tweeting. That's what we right. always say, right? Yeah. And uh, getting these folks to abandon Trump and go to country music or the Crystal Cathedral or, I don't know, keto diet, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Anything but actually participating in the political process mm -hmm. is a win as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I I want that to be true so much. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Um I'm not trying to just make myself feel good here. I no, no. When I looked at that Twitter thread, oh, you know, it's just a terrible choice that we yes. have to give up our freedom mm. to blah, blah, blah. To what? Not die? Yes. yes. You have to give up your freedom to not die. That's what a seatbelt is for. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have to give that up. Um, it's just a terrible choice. And, and clicking their tongue over the terrible choices that life puts at you, not Biden. You mm -hmm. know? So I, I went and went, that was a public face because they're tweeting that in a twitchy Twitter thread. Yeah. So, okay. You know. That's 1% of 1% of 1%. I, I get it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I tend to agree. Strike me dead. <laughs> you know, I, I won't repeat this very often. I agree with Stuart Stevens, mm -hmm. um, political Republican political operative, Stuart Stevens, who um, was on the Bulwark podcast yesterday. And I recommend actually recommend that episode. I recommend you listening to it. I recommend that episode. I might even include a link in it because, um, and I'll get to the, his longer story in a, in a minute or two, but the shorter version is he is of the opinion that we're just stuck with these people until they die. Mm -hmm. They're never mm -hmm. going to change. He, the, he thought his premise is this is so much worse than I thought. And I thought it was awful to begin with um, that, that the best you can hope for is to hold the line on becoming a complete autocratic mm -hmm. um, disaster under Republican dictatorship long enough so that 18 year olds can start to vote and they can take over. And there's, there's, there's no other, there's no alternate future because there's no changing the trajectory of the GOP at this point. They're just going down, 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 down. And there's nothing to stop them. There's no one inside the party who can stop them. There's no force in the marketplace that wants to stop them. There's no corporate effort because it's profitable to make money off of these idiots. Um, uh, Tucker Carlson could wave a red flag tomorrow. And you know what? It wouldn't change the thing because mm -hmm. they'd swap him out and bring in someone else. Mm-hmm. And, mm -hmm. and it would just go right on. There's there no force capable of stopping the GOP from destroying itself, from, from literally killing off their own people and wrecking everything they touch. The best you can do is fence them in, hold them off until they fall off the actuarial charts. <laughs> and, hmm. and this is Stuart Stevens saying this. Yeah, this is Stuart yeah. Stevens saying, look, I know these people. I got these people elected. Yeah. I am to blame for this. I did this. I'd love to write a book that says they should have listened to me like the rest of the people are doing, but they did listen to me. And this is where we are. And these people are unsalvageable. They cannot be turned. There is nothing you can do because, and this is my observation, not his. The minute you say anything bad about them, you become Kathleen Parker. Mm -hmm. They just rip you to pieces and throw you over the, over the side of the ship. And either you come crawling back, begging forgiveness, like every Republican politician did after Trump got elected. Or you disappear down the rat hole and show up at MSNBC as a paid contributor, <laughs> telling people, Never "Golly, Trump it really is yeah, bad." Yeah, yeah. So this—that's it. That's the ecosystem. And the the one thing we can do is shrink it and contain it and fence it in and fight against it until these old fuckers just start dropping off, or until enough of them, frankly, are die of COVID of, of stupidity. Isn't that sad. That that fifty thousand votes in a swing state will suddenly become mm -hmm. 200,000 votes in a swing state. Um, and it's horrifying. It's terrible. It should never have come to this. And that is the, that is the liberal message going back 40 years. It should never have come to this. Mm -hmm. This was stoppable a long time ago. And all the people who are now telling you, golly, it sure is bad. Golly, it sure is awful. You know, what we need to do is all link, link arms together and are all the people who created this problem. And I, I, I will welcome all the help I can get. But I will not stop insisting that part of the deal is, and the liberal vision has been vindicated. Mm -hmm. The liberal mm -hmm. warnings have all been vindicated. The only way you advance this country is with a liberal agenda, with a liberal legislature, and a liberal president. There's no other alternative. 
I don't want to hear from anybody, all of my cuddly new never Trump friends about how we have to accommodate them and accommodate their wishes and not step on their toes, not insult them. Asshole, you insulted us for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So the least you can do is shut your hole and get in line because everything you believed in economically, transportation, infrastructure, education, environment was all wrong. So shut up and get in line and help us win the, the, the thing that you help break. That's all I'm asking. And if you can't do that, you know, I'm not well, going to stop they're, being proud. They're, they're required within the frame of their own mind to make half a million dollars a year. Yes, they are. So they can afford their kitchen. So, yes. you know, that's the huge part of this that we're not talking about mm -hmm. is that when Joe Biden says, I will not increase taxes on people who make less than $400,000 a year, that is no one in the Beltway power structure. No, all of them are going to see their taxes go up. Mm -hmm. And none of them want to see And that. they hate that. Right. Mm -hmm. And they think that people making $100,000 a year should be happy with that. Sure. And you know? then then all of the people out there who are living on $35,000 a year go, what? That's rich. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's, that's cr that I can I can buy a second trailer for that. Uh-huh. Let's talk about origin tales and fairy tales and origin stories. Yeah, that's. Life. This is this is a little bit half formed because I'm still thinking it through. Okay. I'm still working this through in my mind. But I'm working on a post that is the working title is Stuart Stevens and the Caves of Lascaux. And it's about the stories we tell ourselves. And the fact that um Stuart Stevens, his the reason I'm mentioning him is that he's all over MSNBC and he he's on a on podcast because well, his, his book, book is out in paperback. In paperback. So that's so why. He's yes. making the rounds. And the thing that's fascinating to me, and I'm going to I'm gonna uh, quote a headline from the Washingtonian a year ago, Stuart Stevens is the biggest GOP defector yet, yet very different from his pals in the Lincoln Project. Uh, it was all a lie is a glum confessional unlike anything published in the Trump era. It's – Stuart Stevens says very bluntly that um, he – is responsible for the state of the Republican Party. And it began back during the Goldwater administration. And So he's and, willing to go back before 2015. Oh, yeah. Well, that, and that's the difference. That, that's <laughs> yeah. the difference. Yeah. He, is, yeah. he is willing to say, because the Lincoln Project and the Never Trumpers are very clear. Uh, and again, I'm quoting from this year-old article. By casting Trump this way as a perversion of their ideals, the Never Trumpers have cleaved the world neatly in half. There are resistors and there are imposters. The war between the adversarial tribes, which represent the only two kinds of Republicans left on earth. In fact, there's a third kind of Republican, and his name is Stuart Stevens. And Stuart Stevens says, nope, this is not something that happened in 2015. This is not something that happened in 2010. This is something that happened in 1960, 64, 68. This has been a part of the Republican Party growing and growing and getting crazier and crazier for decades. And I saw it. And I chose to believe it was some kind of recessive gene, and it wasn't, and I was wrong, and I'm trying to fix it. And the reason I, I, I get stuck on this is because civilizations are built on the stories they tell themselves. They're built on their origin myths, and civilizations are destroyed by the stories they tell themselves. From the Caves of Lascaux, which is the title of my, pod, of my, of my post, to the Stop the Steal bullshit that's coming out of the radio, this is about stories and legends and myths and origin tales that people tell themselves that are terribly important. The people who are who believe that Joe Biden is illegitimate really believe it. And they mm -hmm. really believe it because someone told them a story. The same story they're told about vaccines are going to kill you. And that Hillary Clinton is secretly eats children for breakfast. They believe this shit. They believe it with all their heart because they were told a story that they wanted to believe. And right now, we are being told a story that everything that's wrong with the GOP began in 2016, that nothing before that matters, and the people on television who were all participated in the run-up to Donald Trump, who are now telling you this story, are the people who should control the message. Mm -hmm. And I ask you to consider just how thoroughly the Obama administration screwed itself and the rest of us because they believed a story they were told. A story that 
we're a centrist nation, that America is a center-right nation, and that both sides are equally bad. And really, you should be courting the good opinion of George Will and Charles Craphammer and David Brooks. Those are the people who can tell you how to govern the country, that somehow the people in Washington, the Republicans in Washington, were just like the Republicans in Springfield. You know, you can, you can drink with them and you can play poker with them and have a cigar and you can cut some deals. And Barack Obama actually believed this shit, despite the fact that history and every liberal I know told him that you're being lied to. They're going to kill you. They're out to destroy you. And he wouldn't believe it because he bought into a false narrative. He bought into an origin myth about the Republicans in Washington. And because he believed the bullshit he was told, he kept reaching out to people who said, great. Every time he reaches out to us, remember, he has to take back a stump. Screw him every time, kneecap him every way you can, attack him all the time. Remember, he wasn't even born here. And when he starts to realize that he can only govern by presidential executive, uh, executive orders, attack him as a dictator. And they weren't ready for that because they believed a, a bullshit story. And my entire life, the animating principle for virtually every conservative, and this is from Ann Coulter and Dead Rush Limbaugh to your favorite cuddly never Trumper, has been the same. Mm -hmm. It's been hippie punching. It's been hating the left. It's been slandering liberals, stomping all over the shit we believe in. And I will not have it anymore. Right. We have a little voice here, and I have a little blog, and I'm tired of apologizing for being right. <laughs> I would like the people to stop, because these people now are really in control of the narrative. Mm -hmm. Your Never Trump friends run the story you see on television and you see in newspapers. And that story is liberals never existed. Or if they did exist, they're really kind of responsible for Trump. And that Joe, uh -huh. Biden, should, Joe Biden should kind of screw his base and listen to us. And I wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me if that was some moron on a bus who was drunk saying this shit. But this stuff is coming off of cable news and the newspaper, the places where those stories are created. So I believe the liberal vision for this country has, vindi has been vindicated. I believe that history has shown that republicanism is a horrible idea run by racist assholes at the top who've created a base of morons at the bottom. They've been working on this project for 40 years. And that's a true story. And I believe that any story that lies about that is setting us up for the next Barack Obama situation. Or the person in Washington says, really? You know, I know I, know I should be listening to Blue Gal, but, but this, guy, this, this guy, Charlie Sykes, really makes a lot of sense. And he has 40 million followers and Blue Gal doesn't. So I'll listen to him. I don't want to hear anymore about how we need to compromise with people who've been wrong all along. Mm -hmm. And I want them to respect us. I want them to stop doing the one thing they've all been doing for 40 years, which is punching hippies. Mm -hmm. And I'm not. Ann Coulter and Liz Cheney were right that one time, Drickland. They were. And we should respect that because they're fucking heroes. <laughs> and that's where it all gets very confusing because then I go, well, Ann Coulter said a mean thing about Donald Trump. Is she my ally now? Yeah. And all the people who are like, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, so shut up, Driftglass, are like, well, okay. No, she's an awful fucking person. And it's your own dumb story that you're telling yourself that now we can trust these people. That's what's messing you up. We can't trust them. They're useful. They can be put to use like any garden tool can be put to use, but they're not our friends. And if they want to help us, they need to get behind our agenda. They need to be knocking on doors in their neighborhoods saying vote democratic, no matter what, because Republicans mm -hmm. are fucking traitors and anything short of that. I don't want to hear a fucking word out of their mouths because we're right and they're wrong and that's it. You, and I want you to go and look at Rachel Bittacoffer's new ad because it is when Republicans win, you lose. Yeah. Well, and I'm she's running it on state issues in state government and making it local and pointing out the, the state numbers on COVID and the state governors that are fucking everything up. Mm -hmm. And the answer, and and she's focusing on families and children and COVID. And that's the winning message. Uh, I do want you to share with uh, our listeners news they might have missed. Because oh, this yeah. is kind of related to what you were saying, Dorothy. Yeah, yeah. Well, and this is, and, and because we are both writers, you and I, 
um, we do listen to the stories people are telling. Mm-hmm. Because every every ad you see on television, every every Marvel movie, everything you read in the paper is is a composed artifact that someone has created to convey something to you. Mm-hmm. And I see things as a writer sees things. And so I try to understand what the intention of the author was and where they wanted to take me. And that's why I do not trust people whose predicate assumption is ignore the people who've been right all along and listen mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but yeah, news you might have missed. There's almost nothing that screams 2021 louder than an all white, all smarmy daily wire panel, all agreeing that Barack Obama destroyed rock and roll. <laughs> He did. He did. I was there. I was there. I I can't believe I voted for the guy that destroyed rock and roll twice. Um, Because, I quote, rock and roll was about white male angst. Barack Obama came along and said, young white men aren't allowed to have angst. Um, Yeah, that happened in the world. Yeah, that happened. And then Twitter promptly administered the requisite beatdown to the all-wise Daily Wire music historians, because apparently, this is news to me, rock and roll was actually invented by black musicians like Sister Rosetta Tharp and Chuck Berry and Little Richard. But when you're down to the absolute dregs of your ideology, just make shit up and blame the black guy. That's all you got to do. Drift Class, I responded with a picture of Dick Clark from the 1960s on doing Rada record for a little bit of soul. Oh, God. (laughs) Because it's a little bit of soul in, uh, in rock and roll, but it's okay because Barack Obama destroyed it. Well, I, I think <laughs> I think a Pat Boone covering Little Richard destroyed there rock and roll. There you go. But that's just me. <laughs> and, um, and and I wish right now, uh, as I do wish at least once a month, that that uh, Johnny Cash were around to, uh-huh. uh, to legislate this, yeah. to arbitrate this dispute, mm-hmm. and to take all these guys out back and give them a good, solid ass whipping. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. One at a time. One at Mm -hmm. a time, fellas. Uh, All right. We're going to do a news roundup. All right. Tucker Carlson admits he's a serial liar. I lie if I'm really cornered or something. I lie. Yeah. Yeah. Says Tucker Carlson (laughs) on a podcast that no one at Fox watching Fox News will ever hear. What if you're exposed? I'll just lie about it. What if you? Yeah. Expose, yeah. yeah. No, it's 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 self enforcing. If if mm-hmm. I'm exposed as having said I lie, I'll just say I lied about that. Um, Fox Corp revealed this week that 90 percent of its staff are fully vaccinated, despite the fact their top anchors are undermining the whole vaccine message. Surprise! And, surprise. and Fox News Building's vaccine mandate is stronger than Biden's. It is. They do daily testing of unvaccinated employees. Daily. I hope it's I hope it's really invasive too. Yep. <laughs> Republican Senator Josh Hawley, you know him, mm-hmm. says he will place a hold on every single civilian nominee for the state and defense departments unless Blinken and Austin resign. He said that his holds will apply to any civilian nominee at the deputy and secretary levels as well as ambassadors. Well, he's playing right along with the mm-hmm. uh handbook from Obama years. Oh yeah. No, this yeah. this as I that's what Kind of didn't shock me, but but re-sparked my interest when I was pulling the Kathleen Parker stuff together from the Obama years, early Obama years. Mm-hmm. Everything they're doing now is what they were doing then. Everything. Mm-hmm. It's exactly the same. And that's why our dear friends on the right don't want us talking about the past. Because mm-hmm. we'll start to notice that, no, this has always been your playbook, man. And back when you were doing it to the black guy, you were all cheering for it. Um, I'd like to thank alert listener Dexter for pointing out that Harvard heard of them is divesting its $41 billion endowment from fossil fuels. Amazing. Harvard should not have a $41 billion endowment. They're no longer a university. They're a hedge fund. And I say that as someone that has a degree from there. Mm -hmm. Uh, But this is a 10-year fight on the part of students and alumni to get them to do this. And they did. So big money. uh, Hopefully we'll make a difference. We are still trying to wrap our heads around the fact that J. Danforth Quayle was the final check on Trump's coup attempt on January 6th. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to live in that timeline, but apparently I do. Democrats crushed the Republican recall scam in California. Yay. The Justice Department asked a federal judge to block the enforcement of a new Texas law that effectively bans almost all abortions. Mutiny at the White House, at the Trump White House. According to Peril, the new book by Washington Post reporters Bob Woodward and Robert Costa, 
The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, called China twice in the final months of the Trump administration to reassure them that Trump had no plans to attack China. Milley was also reportedly so concerned that Trump could go rogue that he convened a secret meeting later that day with senior military officials to remind them that the strict procedures are explicitly designed to avoid inadvertent mistakes or accident or nefarious, unintentional, illegal, immoral, unethical launching of the world's most dangerous weapons. He added, and I'm part of that procedure. Following the revelations, uh, you know, a golf twitler called for dumbass Millie to be arrested for treason. Yeah. Millie was doing his job. He was. He was. And, well, I'll just leave it at, I was preparing for this podcast and I flipped on MSNBC. Uh, and this was the topic they were about to discuss. And the first one up out of the box was uh, Tom Nichols. So then I turned off MSNBC. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I want to. I do want to add something to this. Kelly O'Donnell at the White House press briefing earlier this week mm -hmm. went full Cokie Robert, Cokie's Law. Oh, oh, that's right, that's right. And she can fuck right off. Yeah, you want to tell people what Cokie's you know, Law is? Well, Cokie's Law is is something that Digby came up with. Mm -hmm. um, Cokie Ro Roberts uh, was talking about um, Clinton documents. And the story was Bill Clinton. That's how far back it goes. Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton stuff. Yeah, Bill yeah. Clinton mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. And the story wasn't true. There was there was this was right wing eco chambers, echo chamber stuff. But Cokie Roberts went on ABC this week and said, It doesn't matter whether it's true or not, at my hairdresser, that's all anybody was talking about. Right. It's in the air. It's in the air. So it's mm -hmm. a story. Mm -hmm. Because Washington, D.C. and my hairdresser, they're talking about it. Mm -hmm. And so there's no responsibility for fact in Cokie Roberts' world. It's no. what is the buzz? People are buzzing about and it. And Cokie's law states it that, that the Washington Beltway determines what is a story or not, not factual evidence. Mm -hmm. And so Kelly O'Donnell, a White House correspondent for NBC, gets it, gets her question in at the White House briefing and asked Jen Psaki, well, the fact that people are talking about General Milley in certain ways and certain things, doesn't that somehow make his position less, uh, somewhat tenuous? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's right wing trolls yep. and their U.S. senators that With are big, pushing that's bullshit. Right. If you have a big enough megaphone, you can make anything a story. Right. Well, and who cares if Marco Rubio wants Millie to resign? Right. Well, and that's because Jen Psaki is very good at her job. Yes. She did yes. not say, hey, Kelly, you should hear what people are saying about you. Yeah. And you should um, also fuck right off with, yeah. with your people, cokey slaw bullshit. Right. People say a lot of shit about you and your loose morals and how drunk you get and how you <laughs> sleep around. I don't believe it, but it's in the air, Kelly. So let's so talk about that. It's a story. That. It's a story now. <laughs> right. Look, see what I did there? I did a thing. Um, no, but she did remind everyone that there was an insurrection where a president fomented a mob yes. to attack another branch of government. Sure. And that people who sat, sat by and did nothing when that happened, when the leader of their party did that, mm -hmm. uh, this current president, the person who is president of the United States right now, uh, doesn't listen to those people. He's not taking advice from the insurrectionists? No. Really? And reminding people that there was an insurrection where a president fomented a mob to attack another branch of government mm -hmm. is apparently necessary in... September of 2021. Well, I, I wrote um, years ago. <coughs> excuse me, uh, years ago there was there's a there's a group of characters on time Dr. out, time out. Drift glass coughed. That yes. is also a question at today's Jen Psaki briefing. Why did the president cough once? Oh no, uh, <laughs> I know why I coughed. <laughs> They had to take three minutes of the White House briefing to discuss whether why the president had that cough one yeah. time. Um, I can't answer that because I don't know what kind of drugs Joe Biden was on. I assume they're <laughs> really good. I assume they're top notch because you're president. You get all the best stuff. Um, 
Once upon a time, a long time ago, when I was writing uh, about David Brooks more regularly, I, I brought into the discussion characters from Doctor Who called The Silence. I did a Photoshop of David Brooks, and they're like elongated, um, morbid-looking creatures in black outfits with giant heads. And The Silence don't have much in, intrinsic power. They don't have you know massive ships and big guns. What they do is... Every time you see one, you note what they are, and, you're, and they're terrifying. And the minute you turn your back, you forget they exist. Huh. That's their secret power. The mm -hmm. minute you turn your back. And so there has to be a strategy devised, once people figure out these things are, exist, to note where they are and how many there are and how many you just saw, because the minute you turn your back. And so you have people who are looking at their arm and turning away and turning back, and there's 20 hashtags on their arm. Which reminds them, oh shit! I saw them twenty times and forgot them twenty times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is the the operating system of the Beltway media. Mm -hmm, they completely mm -hmm. forget anything that is inconvenient immediately after it happens. And so Jen Saki has to remind him, you know, there was an insurrection, right? It wasn't like in in eighteen twenty. Mm -hmm. It was eight months ago, and it happened right here mm -hmm. on this block. Mm -hmm. And people in this room were probably partially responsible for it. And the mm -hmm. Republicans in Congress are probably responsible for it. Mm -hmm. And we haven't really investigated it yet. Have you, did you forget that completely? And the answer is, oh, that's right. That, that, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Let's get back to the cough thing. Cause that's really the interesting. Cough thing. Why did he cough? 68% of Americans say the recent rise in COVID-19 deaths in the U S was preventable while 24% say it was not preventable. There was another poll this week showing that Republicans are holding three ideas in their mind at the same time. Number one, Trump is still president. Number two, the election was stolen. Number three, the insurrection was all Antifa. Mm-hmm. I, this, honest to God, just turn the podcast off now, go reread <laughs> 1984 and come back to the podcast. Because <laughs> this is just double think. This is, this yeah, is Orwell's yeah. definition double think. You can yeah. hold as many conflicting ideas as you want at, a, at any given time. You can remember the past and forget it at will. As long as you stick to what the party is telling you is true, mm -hmm. you're fine. And when the party completely changes direction, when they completely reverse themselves, you automatically forget everything the party told you before and re-remember the past as the party tells you to do and that's why liberals are outcast and despised and have enormous superpowers because we're the ones who remember the past. And the past is the eternal enemy of the Beltway media and of the right. Drift class, do you remember when the majority report interviewed a woman at a Tea Party rally who believed that Barack Obama was a Muslim and that the reason she wouldn't vote for him was Reverend Wright? Uh, yes, and, I do. And he explained to her, you can't believe that he's a Muslim and that he follows Reverend Wright because Reverend Wright's a Christian. And she looked at him. She went, oh, come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> you know what I mean is Negro. Come on. <laughs> yeah. And all of the Negroes are part of the big Negro religion. And it, it's all very bad. You know what I mean, but I can't say it because then I look like the racist that I am. <laughs> um, House Democrats outlined their proposed tax increases on corporations and wealthy people to help offset the cost of Biden's $3.5 trillion economic plan. Joe Manchin once again said he would not support the $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation package to expand the nation's social safety net, which includes investments in climate change, health care, taxes, and education. Nothing that is optional. Right. The U.S. ranks last, dead last, among the world's seven wealthiest democracies in COVID-19 vaccination rates. And... Unvaccinated people are approximately 11 times more likely to die of COVID-19. And you can't go to the hospital because the hospitals are full of COVID-19 patients who are mostly 99% unvaccinated. Mm -hmm. A Florida appeals court reinstated the state's ban on school mask mandates while a legal challenge makes its way through the courts. God bless and the children of Florida. Let's you and I go out on a high note, shall we? Sure. One of my favorite fact-based stories from this week. The number of Americans living in poverty fell to a record low last year due to the pandemic relief aid passed by the Democratic Congress. Thank you, Drift Glass. My pleasure, Blue Gal. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. But this week's internet kitty is a dog named Levi. <laughs> 
and his Ooh. three, count them, three cat companions, Ginger, Juniper, and Clove. Drift Glass, do you know how many cats fit on a sofa? Uh, all of them. It's three, because oh, three. you have to leave room for Levi. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you always had, you had to make room for Elisha, but I guess... I'm no, Levi my... will work in this particular instance. There's You leave room for Levi because Levi is warm. And, of course, Levi and his three cat protectors eat freshly poured pet food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your pets will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Levi and the Feline Trio at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty, dog, or other pet to us or multiple pets. All of them can be sent to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Hashtag fire to joy. Uh, we want to thank uh, Dave, listener Dave, who uh, took us out uh, earlier this week, and we he appreciated did. it. It was yeah, fun to meet wonder, him. Wonderful time. And, wonder, wonderful and time. talking about people that we all we both happen to know because... The liberal universe is small and wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it was just nice to meet him. And it we have a lot great. in common with him. I mean, as we do with many of our listeners, yeah. he's a writer mm -hmm. and a thinker. And we just mm -hmm. had a really good time. Mm -hmm. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. And it's a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. And you can, too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information, merch, all the ways that you can support the show, it's all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media and rate us at Apple Podcasts. We, that helps our show, and we thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties would like to remind everyone that there is no such thing as pumpkin spice cat food. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.